Hey, this is Tony with Salt Strong, and in this video, I wanted to talk about some very common mistakes a lot of people make with fishing rods that eventually will cause them to break or have issues with. Now, if you're ever on social media, you're, you'll usually see in the fishing groups some people, you know, bashing rod companies saying, oh, this rod broke on my first trip out. Well, it's usually not the rod company's fault. A lot of times these rods will get damaged during transport. Doesn't matter if you have them shipped directly to you or if you buy them at you know a big box store or a tackle shop because those rods have to get there somehow so they are getting shipped from the manufacturer. During the shipping process, depending on how the rod shipped, uh, how the truck that the rod is on is packed, you know, if things are packed loosely, things are gonna bump into the rod or fall onto the rod or the box that the rod is in and that will lead to damage. And that's what it really comes down to is any type of nick or fracture that occurs on the blank of the rod, that's gonna create a weak point. And when you have a weak point, there's a lot of pressure put on a rod, that area, wherever that weak point's at, is going to cause a failure or a breakage. So when you do purchase a rod, make sure you, know, you fully inspect it from top to bottom, whether it's shipped to you or you know, you pick it up at a local tackle shop or a retail store. Just look it over top to bottom, check the guides, make sure they're not bent. Uh, see if there's any chips in the guides. What you can do is actually take a little Q-tip with you uh, to the store and just go in and out of the guides. And if the cotton on the Q-tip snags any deformity or, uh, you know, chip or anything on those guides, it's going to catch that cotton. So that'll give you a good idea whether or not that rod is good, if the guides are good, or not. And then aside from, you know, shipping and purchasing the rod, when you actually do get the rod and you go to store it, if you have your reel on there already, you have your line, you have everything set up. One thing you do not want to do, I see this all the time when people store their rods or if they're just out on the water fishing, they will reel swivels all the way up through the guides and then they will reel uh, either their lure, hook, or jig head all the way up to the rod tip. That's something you never wanna do because that's gonna damage the insert on the eye of the guide that is up on the tip of the rod. And also you can just end up damaging the whole guide itself. And when you have a chip or a crack or anything in the guide, you know, your line's going through there. So if you find yourself, you know, setting the hook on a fish or putting any pressure on your line and all of a sudden it snaps, probably because there's a fracture or something on that guide insert at the tip of the rod. Next, a common mistake I see people do when storing their rods is they will put their hook, their lure, their jig head, whatever it may be, they'll actually put it into the eye of the guide and then they'll just tighten up their line and think you're good to go. But same thing can happen there. You know, the hook, metal, touching that insert on the guy, uh, guide, the barb of the hook can bounce around and nick that guide and again, you're just gonna do damage to that guide. Now, one thing you can do, I don't really recommend it, is some people will actually put the hook into the uh, frame, the metal frame of the guide instead. That could be another alternative, but what that can lead to is actually bending the guide itself and putting too much pressure on it and it can start you know peeling away from where it's attached to the rod so i really wouldn't recommend that get a rod with a hook keeper that will be the most ideal uh, scenario most rods will have a hook keeper down near the reel or the uh, grips on the rod that's going to be your best bet and when you do that there are also some storage tips there when you put that hook into the rod keeper or the uh, hook keeper there, as you can see here, I have that jig head in the hook keeper. What you don't wanna do is keep your drag super tight. And you also don't wanna keep your line super tight because what's gonna happen is you're gonna apply too much pressure to that rod tip when you keep this too tight. And this is actually another mistake I see people make. It's keeping their line way too tight when they have their hook in the hook keeper. As you can see, the rod tip is bent. Way too much pressure on that rod tip. Pressure is not supposed to be applied in a very short section of the rod. So that can also lead to a breakage. So when you do store your rods, make sure the drag is nice and loose. 
just to avoid that from happening. Because another thing that can happen is when you have this rod in a rod holder, someone might walk past it or it might get snagged on something. Next thing you know, your line's getting pulled. You want it to be free and pull drag. That way, again, it doesn't apply too much pressure to that rod tip. Because if someone walks by it, it snags their pliers. Next thing you know, they're walking down the boat and your rod tip is down and it snaps. So make sure your line and your drag is nice and loose when you do have it stored. And then as far as when you do have your hook in the hook keeper, if you're using, let's say, a really heavy jig head or you have you know, an egg sinker or something attached to your line, you don't want that jig head bouncing around onto the rod. Because what's going to happen if you're transporting that rod, that jig head's going to start bouncing and hitting the actual rod blank and it's gonna cause a fracture, it's gonna cause a crack, it's gonna damage that. So if you do find that happening, if you ever have a rod break right there, something I recommend doing is taking you know, a twist tie or a gear tie or something like that, and you can actually just wrap it around that jig head or that hook to keep it secure so it doesn't bounce around. Also, another thing you can do is get yourself some electrical tape. Get some electrical tape wherever your hook keeper's at, just you know wrap a little bit of electrical tape around the rod from the hook keeper about two or three inches above it and that'll cr create sort of a little cushion just in case your jig head is bouncing around now when it comes to transporting rods a big mistake i see people make is they'll put them in their truck bed or in their boat just laying down and they start sliding around things start sliding into them uh, the rods will you know start bouncing together and that causes damage to the rods that can lead to a possible breakage down the road. So if you do put your rods in the back of your truck bed, make sure they're secure. Also, what I like to do is secure the rods to each other. What I mean by that is very similar to what I was talking about with the hook keeper. If you have a hook or a jig head on there to secure it to the rod so it doesn't bounce around, you can use a gear tie or a Velcro uh, strap to secure the rods together. And what I'll do is I'll put one down near the reels, you know, down near the grip of the rod, keep that secure. And then another important area is going to be the rod tips. You wanna secure the rod tips together so that they're not smacking into each other because again, that can lead to a fracture, which leads to a break at the rod tip. So hopefully these tips can help you out and sort of make you aware of a lot of mistakes that are made with fishing rods that causes them to eventually break and snap. Again, it really comes down to small nicks and fractures on the rods, misuse of the rods, you know, not transporting them right, not using them correctly. A fishing rod is made for pressure, not impact. So if anything smacks into it, the, a lot of these rods are very fragile. So if anything smacks into it, causes a fracture, causes a weak spot, and that rod will break. You know, pressure is meant to be applied from the tip and then transfer it all the way down to your hand on the rod. So when you're fighting a fish, make sure you keep your hand either on that grip or on the reel seat. You never wanna put your hand further up that rod because then you are shortening, basically shortening the length of that rod and that rod is not able to transfer that power all the way down to your hand. So that will cause a break close to the middle, if not up on the rod tip. So never grab your rod while you're fighting a fish on the actual rod blank itself. Never high stick because again, you're applying too much force, too much pressure, and that rod can snap. So that will wrap up this video. If you have any questions or comments or any additional feedback you would like to share, perhaps you uh, may have some horror stories out there about your rods breaking on you, definitely let us know down below. Also, if you're looking for some tackle gear, rods, reels, be sure to check out our shop page at fishstrong.com. You can find all that on there. And if you're one of our insider members, you do get up to 20% off all tackle and gear on our shop page. So be sure to take advantage of that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one. If you're new to Salt Strong, we are the online fishing club that guarantees you'll start catching more fish while saving money on your favorite tackle and gear. To learn more, head over to saltstrong.com and we'll see you there.